Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Friend uses me as a personal tech monkey for his daughter's laptop. He keeps breaking doing shady stuff on. The second story. Client did not want to pay for my job, and I took revenge on him. And the first story is, hey, can you fix my daughter's laptop for free? Multiple times. A bit of backstory and personal beliefs. I'm willing to help my friends, but we all know someone who has or have themselves a friend who's the group mooch. The kind of person who knows you're getting together and just shows up nothing in hand and expects to be given free food and booze the entire time. Yet sadly you put up with them till it gets to the breaking point of wanting to beat them senseless with a shovel. This story is about said friend, whom I finally got to the breaking point with. My moocher friend isn't tech savvy like at all. He has zero respect for tech and constantly uses me as his go-to man when stuff goes sideways, almost always his doing. This is from the olden days of Windows 8, and being a fresh hot mess that was the next big thing, everyone hated because it took the standard Windows interface. I hate Windows 8, in case you didn't pick up on that. He had recently bought a laptop for his daughter, since she was starting to need it for school, and he wanted a mobile PC to use when he felt like it. Pretty sure he just wanted it for himself, but needed to convince the wife to okay the expense. Instead of asking me for input, he decided he was just going to go to the big blue multi-story and buy the cheapest laptop model that rhymes with hell. It took less than a day of him fighting with it to call me to ask if I'd put Windows 7 on it, because he hated Windows 8. I asked why not return it and get a Windows 7 model, to which he responded, Big Blue doesn't have any Windows 7, only 8, and my daughter really needs this computer. Sure she does. I agree, and he drops it off within an hour. I should note that this happened just after Windows 8 dropped, and there was no classic shell programs out that simply said F off new piece of SH tablet design. We're using the old one everyone knows and can use, so my options were limited. Did an initial look at what I was getting myself into, and lucky me, hell it only put out drivers for Windows 8 for this model. Yay! I do about 6 hours worth of hunting, downloading and tweaking drivers, and praying and cursing the tech gods, as I installed Windows 7. I had to cherry pick working drivers for most of the hardware. The rest I got to work through sheer trial and error. I made a restore disk, backed up and labeled every driver for this system in individual numbered folders, in case I needed to redo anything on this piece of SH. My friend is notorious for effing up his computer's operating system. I give him a ring and let him know it's good to go, and he picks it up the next day. Less than two weeks later he texts saying something's wrong with it, it won't do blah blah blah, or I can't get it to do what I want. Shocking, I know. I just restore from the disc I made and give it back same day. Let's see how long this lasts. Almost a week later, same thing. Again, a quick restore and I give it back. This time it took almost a whole three weeks till I got a text. Now I'm peeved. What the hell is he doing to this thing to F up the operating system? I finally took the time to look at the system and see WTF was going on. He had a bunch of crack games downloaded and was trying to run those. A bunch of virus and malware on it. Oh, and a bunch of shady sites in his browser history. I'm livid. The only reason I kept fixing this D thing was because it was supposed to be his daughter's. I got a hold of his wife to see exactly who was really using the laptop and for what. Turns out he told her it was having issues and he was constantly trying to fix it at home, and even took it to work to mess around with it when he had time. He was a manager at a hut that sells pizza. He's one of those real hands-on managers who lets everyone know what needs to be done, then F's off in the office. So I get the evil idea of fixing things my way. My first step to fixing things my way was to make an admin account that only I had the info for and limit the other account to a limited user. When I talked to his wife I got a good idea of what his daughter really liked as far as shows, games, etc. I then proceed to pimp this laptop out for a 10 year old girl. My Little Pony wallpapers, about 100 on rotate, the entire My Little Pony cartoon show stored directly on the computer, Bratz, Barbie, the works. I even redid the icons to a My Little Pony theme and tweaked the user interface to be pink and purple colored. I made sure there was a parental lock on the browsers. I installed TeamViewer and locked in my personal credentials so I could get on anytime I needed. And just for good measure I installed a handy program called DeepFreeze. For those unfamiliar with it, it snapshots the drive as is and restores the drive to that exact image every time the power cycles. Only downside to this program is you lose anything you save on the computer when the power cycles. Not a problem since I had gotten a bulk pack of thumb drives that were multicolored and came with lanyards. I even went a step above and beyond and got a My Little Pony skin for the laptop lid, in case he thought of taking it to work again. 
I personally delivered the laptop this time when the wife and daughter were home. The girly high-pitched squeals of joy that nearly ruptured my eardrums made it all worth it. She went off on a joy-induced tirade as I show her and her mom everything I did, including all the shows and games I put on just for her. I then gave her a bright pink thumb drive with purple lanyard and explained that when she wanted to play the games or save anything, the drive needed to be plugged in. I set the save path for all the games to the thumb drive and added a shortcut to the drive itself on the desktop to make sure she wouldn't lose any schoolwork she was doing. I made sure both her and her mom knew the thumb drive had to be plugged in, otherwise things wouldn't be saved. I didn't mention the parental lock I set up or deep freeze. I wanted it to be a surprise for my friend later. Both her and her mom thanked me. I got a big hug from the daughter who was still flying around on cloud 9. She was begging her mom to watch My Little Pony with her before I even left. I knew it was only a matter of time till I got an angry text and call from my friend. As soon as he got a chance to use the laptop, I was waiting with gleeful anticipation. I had dropped the laptop off on Monday, and I knew he wouldn't get a chance to use it till Friday when he got back from a trip he took. Cut to Friday night and I get a call from around 8pm, which I ignore and let go to voicemail. I get 3 more calls every 5-10 to 10 minutes which I also ignore. Then I get a bunch of texts which I ignored until about 11pm, when I figured he had ample time to try and F with the laptop to only be shut down at every attempt. I call him up with an especially snarky attitude, acting half asleep just to peeve him off. Mooch. Finally, where the F have you been? I tried calling you and texting you but you never responded. Me. Yeah, I had a long day so I took an evening nap. What's up? Mooch. What's up? This piece of SH laptop is busted, that's what up. I can't get anything to work right. I downloaded a game and tried installing it, but it says I don't have admin rights. I restarted it and the game files were gone completely, so I re-downloaded it but it still couldn't install it. It's not even letting me browse the web. I thought you fixed this. What the hell? Me. Calm down. I'm sure it's something simple. Let me remote in. Mooch. Wait, you can do that? Me. Yeah, I got sick of having to have it dropped off so I installed remote software. Let's see, first thing I do is remotely restart the system. Mooch. It did it again. Me. What? Mooch. The game I downloaded is gone from the desktop. Me. Oh, yeah, I put software on the laptop that restores it to a default setting. Anything not saved on an external drive gets removed. I gave your wife and daughter a thumb drive. Didn't they tell you it was needed? Mooch. No? What the hell? Why'd you do a stupid thing like that? Me. Well, I've had to fix this thing three times already, and I got sick of it, so I made sure anything you downloaded or tried to install would be deleted and blocked. You don't have admin rights, I do. Last time there was over a dozen viruses and malware from your games, and the games you were trying to run would barely run on this laptop even if you had legit versions. Mooch. What the F? Insert 15 minute rant I didn't pay any attention to because I don't care. Well, why won't it let me browse the web? Me. Are you sure? Let's see. I bring up Google and start browsing standard sites. Hit a few cartoon sites I favorited for his daughter. Everything looks fine to me. Could you be referring to the sites for adults that were in the browser history on your daughter's laptop? Mooch. Um. Me. Yeah, I thought so. See, me being the upstanding guy I am, I turned on parental controls to keep web browsing safe for your 10-year-old daughter. The F is wrong with you. Mooch. But. Me. No, no buts. It took a lot of work to get this thing working for your daughter's sake and then you use it as your personal play toy which I had to fix three times. I'm done with your BS. I made it so your daughter can use her laptop when and how she needs. If you want to get your own laptop and F it up beyond repair, that's fine by me. No more freebies if you F up something being an idiot. If you think this is unfair, I'd be more than happy to let your wife know exactly what the issue with the laptop was, including screenshots of your browsing history. I don't mind helping, but you go above and beyond being a mooch a lot of times. Anything else you need help with? Mooch. No. Me. Have a great weekend. Click. Having spent over 18 years in customer service and tech support, so I went a bit nuclear on him, but I had had enough of his SH. The next story is... Reneg wants the jobs done? Prepare for your just desserts. A few years after I started my business, I was asked to clean up and optimize a number of PCs in multiple locations, as well as set up some forms and templates for a new client who owned a local restaurant. The work, all labor apart from a little travel, was performed over the space of a month due to scheduling conflicts and school holidays, but on completing the last of it, the client confirmed verbally that he was happy with all I'd done and to go ahead and send an invoice. I duly emailed an invoice for a sum just in excess of 400 pounds. I waited for payment, never heard anything, sent reminder emails, called and left messages but no response. Eventually a couple of busy months had passed and I met the client by chance in the local supermarket. On asking why he'd not paid or been in touch, 
He said that all the PCs were as bad as they had been before I'd started, and that he had tried to contact me with no success. As my landline and mobile phone had caller display as well as answering services, and there had been no emails, I knew the latter was BS, and as any PC user knows, a system can easily go back to pot if the user's bad habits don't change. So I contacted a local debt collector, gave him the details, printouts of my call logs and post invoicing emails, and he took them to the restaurateur. On his return, his words were, he's not disputing the invoice, he's saying that the work wasn't done right, so it's his word against yours. I queried if it was worth taking the guy to small claims, to which the debt collector said, even if you could prove he confirmed he was satisfied with the work, they might insist you get his computers back to their pre-invoice state again. Do you really want to spend more time doing that? Of course the answer was no, so I stewed it over in my mind and came up with a plan. At this point it was late November, so creating two throwaway email accounts and female names, I got in touch with the restaurant to book a large party for Valentine's night the following February. I put it down as, my husband's surprise 40th birthday party, confirmed that my husband's sister couldn't make the journey north, but would happily pay the £10 a head deposit as her share towards the night. Of course, as time went on the idea grew arms and legs. The numbers attending increased, until the owner suggested he'd reserve the whole restaurant for the evening, and they'd happily arrange the seating to suit us. But could I ensure the deposit was sorted ASAP, please? To keep him on side, I asked for a proposed menu in advance, so that I could send it to all the attendees for pre-ordering. Naturally, they were delighted that they'd know this, as it makes their life much easier. Consequently, the numbers for all three courses were emailed in, with a few fussy eater variables thrown in for good measure. Needless to say, by the beginning of February, he was getting quite antsy, about there being no sign of the deposit, but I reassured him that the sister's check must have been lost in the post, so she'd sent another by special delivery, if they could ensure someone was there to sign for it. I knew the owner lived about 25 miles away, and the restaurant didn't open until 5 p.m., so he'd have to come in very early and hang around waiting for it. A week before D-Day and he'd obviously had enough. He emailed in a spat saying they'd turned away numerous inquiries, had no deposit, and could no longer hold back on taking other bookings. This time I didn't bother replying. My part was done. My wife at the time and I were booked at another restaurant close by for our own Valentine's meal, after which we took a walk past the restaurateur's business premises to see just two cars in their parking lot, one of which was his. I'm not sure how much he must have lost out on that night, but knowing his prices, I'd bet it was significantly more than the £400 plus I'd invoiced him. Naturally, I had no hesitation letting all and sundry know how he'd behaved either, so he was blacklisted or forced to pay up front for any work by IT and other professionals I knew locally. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.